Welcome everybody to the California Earthquake Clearinghouse virtual webinar. I am Cindy Pridmore. I'm a senior engineering geologist with the California Geological Survey and chair of the uh, California Earthquake Clearinghouse. Uh, CGS shares the, uh, uh, is one of the managing members among five, and the other managing members are ERI, USGS, Cal OES, and the Seismic Safety Commission. Um, the purpose and goal of our workshop today is to improve and increase the understanding of the California District Clearinghouse, basically how it works and when it's activated. We're going to explain who participates and how to be involved, uh, explain uh, post-event data collection, processing, and access of that data. Um, unfortunately, we were going to have a, a speaker today uh, talking about the safety assessment program, but he's been called off to a California fire meeting. Uh, we will include him next week, and he will be in the recording that we put online. Uh, so we had to uh, admit that for today. But we all, we'll be having a Cal OES Disaster Service Worker Program uh, described and how it fits in with the Earthquake Clearinghouse. Um, this workshop is going to be presented two times right now and then next week uh, uh, on Tuesday in the afternoon. And it will be posted at the California Earthquake Clearinghouse.org website. So our speakers today, uh, me, Cindy Pribler with uh, CGS. Uh, following me will be Ann Rosinski from FEMA Region 9 talking about NAPA and, and FEMA. Uh, Maggie Ortiz is our moderator and also uh, has, uh, she does everything and she's contributed to the Clearinghouse Operations uh, uh, presentation as well. Kate Thomas is going to be talking about Ridgecrest field data collection. Luke Blair with USGS is going to be talking about Ridge data, Ridgecrest data processing. Uh, Sherry Blakenheim with the Cal OES is going to talk about Clearinghouse coordination with Cal OES. State Operations Center, regional areas, and local governments. Don Gluckert is going to be talking about the Disaster Service Worker Program. And uh, Jason Spock will be on next week. Um, just a little bit of logistics. It's a two hour, about, about a two hour webinar. Uh, we're going to have a set of brief presentations that's one after each other. The question box will be monitored, so please put your questions in there. At the end of the program, we're going to answer as many of those questions as we can. Um, all questions and feedback that you uh, uh, want to put in there uh, will be themes for frequently asked questions uh, that we'll, we'll provide answers to on the Clearinghouse website. And uh, in the spirit of Ann Rosinski, we're going to restart the bi-monthly call. Uh, and we'll be answering a lot of those topics that come into the question list. We'll be addressing them in the bi-monthly calls as well. So please join our mailing list at California Earthquake, at California EQ, clearinghouse.org. Um, just a few more, another comment here, the webinar controls. If you uh, look, you can join the audio uh, by choosing computer audio, or you can use uh, the phone call to, to dial in as well. Uh, the questions panel is down below that, and you can submit your questions there. Uh, today's presentation is being recorded and will be posted on uh, the YouTube channel within a few weeks, and it will be linked to the Clearinghouse website. Just want to mention that this webinar is being supported with funding under a cooperative agreement, EMF 2019, California 14, with FEMA and the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. California Earthquake Clearinghouse basically um, provides the opportunity for, for all agencies and researchers in the field to coordinate reconnaissance efforts, manage access to restricted areas, and share findings. Uh, who comes to the clearinghouse, basically scientists, engineers, economists, sociologists, um, anyone conducting earthquake-related field investigations in the, in the affected area is, is welcome. The California Earthquake Clearinghouse basically links the scientific and engineering communities with agencies and organizations responsible for emergency response and recovery so that their findings can inform the response and recovery efforts. Uh, information is shared with the State Operations Center and outward to the regional areas and the local emergency management. Just a little background on, on the California Earthquake Clearinghouse. The first informal California Earthquake Clearinghouse was convened by the state geologist, Wesley Brewer, the day after the magnitude 6.6 .6 San Fernando earthquake in 1971. More than 40 geologists, seismologists, engineers convened at the California Geological Survey Office used to be called CDMG, but uh, that was our former name at the time. Uh, these included representatives from Caltech, USCS, ERI, uh, LA, city and county, numerous universities, including UC Santa Barbara, USC, Cal State LA, University of Washington, 
uh, and other agencies, including CGS and private consultants, uh, all who met there to exchange information. Uh, Governor Ronald Reagan recognized the value of this earthquake clearinghouse, which led then to legislative action to ensure that lessons from future earthquakes would be learned as well. Just a little bit on the authority of, 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 of how and why we can have a clearinghouse. Um, after major and or damaging earthquake in California, the California Geological Survey is authored to authorized to establish an earthquake clearinghouse and works in partnership with DRI, USGS, Cal OES, and the Seismic Safety Commission. Um, this is included within the Public Resources Code uh, that addresses uh, the responsibilities of California Geological Survey. Among them include that they shall carry out programs in cooperation with federal, state, and local government agencies that will reduce the loss of life and property and protect the environment by mitigating geologic hazards. Hazard assessments, including identification, mapping of geologic hazards, and estimates of their potential consequences to life, property, and the environment, and the likelihood of occurrence. Um, it also includes a statement that emergency response to geologic hazards, including but not limited to those related to nat natural disasters, including the monitoring and assessment of anomalous geologic activity, and the operations of clearinghouse for post-event earth science investigations. So and within California, uh, it is included within the, uh, the, the state code. The California Geological Survey uh, basically as the lead with this, we also have supporting agreements with our partners. Um, CGS and Cal OES have a memorandum of agreement uh, that CGS is to provide geotechnical data and advice to Cal OES regarding natural hazards in support of emergency planning and information support is required during state disaster response operations. During a natural hazards emergency event, there is direct communication of CGS with Cal OES via the 24-hour duty officer and the Cal OES Housing Specialist. CGS coordinates investigations with the USGS as well under a memorandum of understanding. And with our other clearinghouse partners, we also coordinate um, emergency response with ERI, Seismic Safety Commission, other state, local, and academic and private entities. Um, the main managing partners of the California um, clearing, Earthquake Clearinghouse, or ERI, as I mentioned before, uh, California Geological Survey, Cal OES, California Seismic Safety Commission, and the USGS. And we have many other collaborators, partners. These are just uh, some of the names, but uh, many people collaborate along with us. So when is an earthquake clearinghouse activated? Uh, basically, the California Earthquake Clearinghouse is activated after an earthquake that meets any of the following parameters. So in an urban area, when it, if an urban area is struck by a damaging earthquake that has a magnitude of six or above, or upon the recommendation of the managing partners, PGS, USGS, ERI, Seismic Safety Commission, and Cal OES, even when the magnitude threshold is not exceeded, but damage is significant, or if the earthquake occurs in a remote area, less densely populated area, when an earthquake is large enough to be to cause damage to structures and lifelines. And this was some of the case for Ridgecrest when it first, uh, the 6.4 first kicked off. A federal disaster declaration is not necessary to activate the clearinghouse, but the clearinghouse will always be activated when there is a federal disaster declaration. 